and I am project officer working at the Joint Secretariat and especially on the sustainable tourism uh, topic. This morning with uh, uh, some of my colleagues, uh, including uh, Guillaume Javouez, that is also uh, a project officer. Uh, we have also uh, partners here that will uh, introduce themselves later on. We have Georgina Calvo from the Diputación of Barcelona and Julia from the Fundación El Legado Andalusi. Sorry, do you hear me? Or because I heard someone, but I don't see you now. So is it okay? Okay, great. Um, so of course, please keep your microphones shut. And uh, just to let you know that the meeting will be recorded and uh, published on our website. So you will have all the material, including uh, this morning presentation. Now, uh, the, the agenda, uh, the, the seminar has two parts. Uh, I will present the main features of the terms of reference. We will have time uh, for questions and, of course, answers to your questions. And then the governance project that are part of the Sustainable Tourism Mission will uh, present the activities uh, that where in where you will be involved as thematic projects and also the topics that are tackled by already approved projects under the, the last call. And we will have also a question and answer uh, slot dedicated. Now, a reminder of the upcoming key dates. So we opened this call, uh, as you know. Uh, we are having now, uh, to, this morning is the last one of the thematic seminars, but we will have technical meetings to help you um, write down a, a good application. Uh, as you can see, the dates on April uh, the 4th, it will be on partnership and uh, logical framework and so on. The last one will be on the 16th of May uh, to answer all the unanswered questions you will have, but I'm sure there won't be. Um, we expect a starting date of the projects next year in uh, April 2025. Uh, of course, everything depends on the number of applications received and um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, we have also that can be interesting for you uh, national national information days are on this call. So you have the dates uh, published here. It's also published on our website in the section news and events. So you will have all the update, most updated information. Uh, there will be, uh, it's not written in the previous slide, but there will be also an information day in Portugal. It has to be confirmed when, but you, it will be published. And OK, let's have a look at the key features for the sustainable tourism mission. So this slide is just a reminder of the program architecture for you to understand well where you will stand if your project is approved. So the program um, selected some specific objectives that fit into four missions. The one that, that is interesting us today is the last one in pink, the enhancing sustainable tourism. And all projects will have to fit in. Um, here, um, what is, yeah, what is really important here is for you to see that the specific objective 1.1 is not concerned by this call. So the projects will have uh, only the opportunity to apply under specific objective 2.4, 2.6 and 2.7. So this is really important to, to understand. And also another thing that I wanted to let you know is that the <clears throat> The terms of reference that were online on our website, we discovered a small inconsistency, uh, a small error. It was a switch of definition between two specific objectives. Even though you can uh, understand this, it, it was a, a mistake. Uh, we advise you to download again. Now it's uh, corrected on our website, so you can have the latest version uh, correct uh, of the terms of reference. Um, OK, so going to this mission, well, the main objective is to reinforce and promote sustainability in the tourism sector. And to achieve this, uh, the tourism is addressed as a transversal issue. So we can either support climate change adaptation in tourism destinations or foster tourism in circular uh, integration into circular economy 
or also uh, promotes uh, the preservation of natural resources and reduction of pollution in touristic areas. Also, an important uh, thing to know is that uh, we expect to select around five projects as we have a budget of around 11 million uh, for the this uh, mission, so there won't be uh, that much projects. It's an, an approximation. It can be six or seven, but it is uh, the main idea. Um, regarding the targeted areas, oh, all type of areas are targeted in this call. Uh, coastal and maritime areas, island, rural and mountain areas, urban areas. But depending on the type of activities, of course, a focus could be given to uh, the one that you can see here, such as uh, natural protected areas or areas of special interest, um, in order to provide the most adapted outputs. The core target groups consist of national, regional and local public authorities that are engaged in policy making, but here again, we are, are also targeting uh, other relevant bodies for the tourism, such as SMEs, <laughs> sorry, or sectoral agencies. You can see here uh, a list of uh, other bodies that can be targeted, and you will have everything, of course, in the terms of reference. OK, uh, so I said there are three specific objectives targeted in this call. The first one is uh, the 2.4 on climate change adaptation and risk prevention. So candidates uh, should prioritize actions with a focus on uh, re uh, resilience of tourism destinations or uh, regenerative tourism model. And there's the focus on uh, under this uh, specific objective. Now we have different types of outputs and results. The outputs and results are interconnected. Okay, I will use this thing. No, okay, I'm trying to use the laser. Yeah. Okay, here you see the, the output uh, that is called, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, strategies and action plans jointly developed. And it is connected to the results yeah, that you will produce. Is uh, joint strategies, action plans taken up by organization. So, for instance, here uh, for uh, the specific objective 2.4, uh, we can uh, propose uh, some, some examples such as the identification and adoption of gener regenerative practices or renovation of tourism infrastructure or uh, uh, also implementing existing policies and improve their access to funding. Um, okay, talking about another output, uh, it is the, the the one called jointly developed solutions and solutions taken up or upscaled by our organization. We can also give you some examples, for instance, the inclusion of crisis management in uh, destinations, um, touristic destinations management plans, or reducing the impact of touristic activities on an environment, or um, the recovery of ecosystems that are turned vulnerable because of mass tourism. So this uh, was for the objective 2.4. Now going through the circular economy uh, specific objective, while well, candidates must uh, prioritize actions with a focus on um, efficient use of natural resources and waste reduction, green and circular transition of business models, or all, again, the reuse philosophy. Going to the type of outputs we are expected and the results, of course, uh, talking about the, uh, the solutions, um, we have the solution that for um, circular business developments, or it can also be uh, solutions to uh, mm -hmm. to provide a change in tourism behavior or to encourage local consumption uh, through touristic activities in order to support local producers and suppliers and also raise awareness about reducing energy consumption and so on. The, for the 2.6 on circular economy, some examples of strategies and action plans. Uh, it can be uh, on the resource management to increase uh, efficacy and productivity in, in the tourism sector. It can be also uh, 
plans for boosting transnational legislation regarding tourism, green transition, uh, with uh, certain criteria for, uh, on environmental performance, energy efficiency, circularity. Uh, this was uh, the uh, uh, example for the circular, econ uh, yeah, circular economy objective. And last but not least, the specific objective 2.7 on biodiversity protection. You should uh, prioritize actions with a focus on smart and sustainable ecotourism, on raising awareness and appreciation of local environmental resources, on green infrastructure, net-based solution, or advanced technologies for the tourism services. Of course, uh, the interpretation of these focus points is rooted in sustainable tourism. So the actions realized in this framework must have a central objective of reduce, reducing the negative impact of tourism. Otherwise, they could correspond to the natural heritage mission. Uh, yeah, OK, a examples of uh, solutions for the specific objective 2.7. The solution for the preservation of biodiversity suffering from high touristic pressures or solutions to restore degraded natural habitats or, or also uh, solutions to increase synergies among natural ecosystems. With high touristic assets, let's stick to the tourist, uh, tourism topic always. Uh, here you have examples for the strategies and actions plans we are looking for, such as, um, <coughs> sorry, strategies and action plans for the improvement and enforcement of environmental policies, legislations, or uh, strategies or action plans for the integration of protection, conservation, and restoration of natural resources into territorial uh, tourism strategies. Please remember that all these examples are indicative. Of course, uh, we encourage you also to uh, find new, uh, better, great ideas and solutions and strategies and action plans you will uh, come with. Now, um, projects should integrate uh, in the design of the, your, your proposal, the complementarities with other initiatives, strategies, uh, programs, priorities, uh, focusing with similar challenges. Here in this screen, you can see uh, some of these strategies. We have a special focus on the results coming from Prima Horizon, of course, from Euromed, but also Prima Horizon Live, MFAF, and on the results that are included in the Sustainable Tourism Toolkit uh, that is published uh, on our website. It was um, created with the, together with the Euromed program, Italy France Maritimo program, and NextMed program in the framework of the of our multi-program coordination mechanism that is called that, like this. Uh, you will have all the references in the terms of reference, so yes. And the last point that is important to consider while uh, building your project proposal is that your project will be part of a community. This community is led by the governance project that will present themselves uh, later on. And the, this community uh, aims to create a coherence among you, among all the, all the projects in the mission. So here you uh, are um, shown in the center of the slide as thematic projects, and you will be supported by the institutional dialogue project and the thematic project, uh, thematic to community project, um, namely Georgina and Julia uh, that I was talking uh, about before. Um, but this is just a teaser, so you will have everything after after the question and answer time. So. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. I'm trying to come back here or raise your hand. <clears throat> I'll give you a few minutes, a few minutes to, uh, to think about it and don't hesitate. Also, while you are thinking about uh, any question that should come up, um, we have on our website a forum, a dedicated forum to uh, propose your project idea, to meet other partners, um, to exchange uh, with other uh, actors from the area. So you can use <clears throat> this forum on our website. 
And what else? Of course, uh, if you have other questions uh, after this uh, seminar, you can send them on our website and we will answer of everything uh, uh, as fast as we can. Now, conversation. Sorry, maybe you have some questions I didn't see. No. Really? You did not see the presentation? Okay. I think it was working. Okay, so yes, yes, Raben Abdella, you you've sent your message. You can also go to the forum to try to meet other partners. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I, I feel better now that I know that you saw the presentation. I was that clear that you have no question. OK. Mm. Then maybe we can move to the other part of the meeting uh, with the. Okay. With the. OK, I see one. How important is the measurement of the impact in the project? Uh, it is important. <laughs> this is one of our criteria for um, evaluation, assessment of the projects. So uh, you really um, have to uh, explain well, uh, as concretely as possible, what will be the impact on the territory. It is important. I mean, I can. I don't have any scale to give you, but it's really important. It's part of our evaluation. OK, the link of the forum. Yes, I will put it in the in the chat. And <clears throat> if we have no other questions, uh, maybe we can move to the presentation of the governance project that are working in the mission and that you will be working with uh, if your project is approved. I think uh, Georgina will Start if you're here. Sorry, I don't yes. see anybody. Okay, I'm here. thanks. <laughs> okay, thanks, Georgina. Um, if if it's okay for you, I I share my screen directly. Yeah, yeah, sure. With uh, our presentation. Uh, well, I present myself. Uh, I'm Georgina Calvo from the tourism department of the Barcelona Provincial Council. Uh, we are leading currently the Community for Tourism project, the thematic community project of the Sustainable Tourism Mission, and this presentation will be. I'll do this presentation together with Julia, who, who Pascal mentioned before. She is the lead partner uh, of the Dialogue for Tourism project, the other governance project of the Sustainable Tourism Mission, uh, working at the Legado Andalusi Foundation. Uh, so I'll start with the presentation. This is what uh, the structure of the presentation that we will follow. I'll start presenting the Community for Tourism project, then Julia will uh, give you some more details about uh, the Dialogue for Tourism project. And at the end, uh, we'll uh, share with you some information about the, the current thematic projects that uh, were approved in the, in the first uh, call of thematic projects and that are incorporated in the, in the Sustainable Tourism Mission already. Uh, okay, so, well, both governance projects, uh, I don't know if you know it, uh, but uh, both governance projects cover the whole duration of the of the programming period. So we started our activities in January, uh, in January last year, and we will be implementing the, the project uh, until September 2029. The main mission of the Community for Tourism project as thematic community is to optimize uh, the conditions for for sharing the knowledge. This means that we will uh, facilitate exchanges and, and try to identify potential synergies among the projects of the community and projects of other missions of the program as well. We will also uh, collect the results with the, uh, of the projects with the aim to uh, amplify the outreach of, of your results and, and support the transference of these results. Uh, for this, we will try to mobilize other actors, uh, external actors through our different activities. And we will lastly also support uh, the integration of all these results uh, into policies and strategies. And this is the part in which uh, we will be more connected to the institutional dialogue project um, uh, that the activities will be presented later. 
go to the next slide. Okay, this is uh, just for you to, well, to give a bit of, of context. Um, this is just a bit of framework uh, of our experience. Uh, we were leading in the last programming period um, the sustainable tourism, the past sustainable tourism community. It was uh, the so-called horizontal project uh, of sustainable tourism. And well, we were uh, we were working during three years with uh, 30 projects and more than 200 uh, organizations. Uh, and our main activities were focused on this, uh, these two axes, no? community building, generating this critical, critical mass of projects, synergies, um, generating this knowledge, systematizing the, all the results uh, that the projects produced. And we were also organizing different, uh, different transferring and capitalization activities. We organized workshops, debates at uh, the policy level, um, uh, we gathered all the project outputs uh, and the transferring and mainstreaming processes of the projects through different mapping. So we gathered a lot of information that we think it's very useful that we can take advantage of during this period as well. Here you have some uh, relevant publications that uh, we, we generated during this period. And one of them, the first one, uh, it could be very interesting for you as it is the catalog of outputs and results from the past projects of the community. So I think that now that you're um, working on the on the development of your project, uh, you can find here a lot of tools uh, together with the toolkit that the uh, Joint Secretary had mentioned um, from the past uh, projects. Well, this is a, uh, uh, here you are the, what's the composition uh, of the partnership of Community for Tourism Project. We are eight partners. Um, led by the Barcelona Provincial Council, we are the, with, together with the University of Thessaly, the Adriatic Ionian Euro Region, the CPMR, Nextur, Unimed, Plan Bleu, and the University of Tirana. Uh, we are, of course, as all partnerships, um, all the work that we are doing, we have different roles within the projects, and uh, we um, are also trying to cover all the Mediterranean area, having different antennas in all the regions to, to follow what's happening uh, related to the, to the tourism sector in, in all the Mediterranean area. Uh, besides the, the partnership, there are 31 associated organizations that are um, linked to our project. Um, they will be involved in our most relevant activities uh, to support precisely the exchange of knowledge, uh, the testing, the evaluation of project outputs, and the transferring and capitalization. So uh, they will be present, and we will try to uh, involve them actively in, in our activities. And well, this is just a general overview of our work plan. It is uh, organized, this is structured in these three work packages that were given by the Joint Secretariat and that give answer to what's our mission. Um, I will jump directly to the next slide to give a, well, a, a closer look to each work package and which are the main activities in, in each one of them. So in the case of our work package reuse, this is where um, we will gather all the information from the projects and work directly with the project. And among our activities, we will uh, pro uh, promote the dissemination of all the results through thematic papers and scientific publications related to the work that we are doing in the community. We will organize all the projects in working groups um, to support the exchange of knowledge and, and potentiate these synergies. Uh, we will generate uh, also a catalog of outputs to, to promote this dissemination of the results. And we also have a very interesting tool, which will be the Join the Med platform. It will be a knowledge hub, an open platform um, that will visualize all this uh, knowledge and all these, uh, well, all that all that's generated within the community, it will be visualized uh, through graphics and, and other interactive, um, um, well, um, information. So it, it be it will be a very visual database, and it will be open to to anybody to know about uh, the results. Then in work package transfer, this is where we uh, will promote this transferring of the practices uh, practices and results um, of the projects to other actors and territories. And one of the main activities, and this one is allocated under this work package but it will be transversal in the whole project. And we will 
ask you ask your participation also in this activity is the creation of the four Mediterranean clusters. Uh, we will group the projects and different actors in the four specific objectives that the tourism mission is covering, which are the four specific objectives of the program: um, innovation, circular economy, climate change, and nature and biodiversity. So we will group all the projects uh, with other external actors that could support in the in the transferring and, and mainstreaming processes of of, of your results. Um, through these clusters, we will um, uh, generate policy documents, best practices reports, and two other activities that are interesting in this work package are the Met Sustainable Tourism Convention, which was an activity that we already organized in the past programming period. We will organize the third and fourth editions during this uh, this programming period. And then through the Interreg Euromet Academy, which I guess that you already know, we will promote uh, the dissemination and transferring of the results of the projects um, of the community and the, and the mission. And then lately under the World Package Coordination, this is uh, where, as I said before, we'll try to coordinate um, all of our activities be, and, and we'll try to coordinate our work with these are uh, other actors in the Mediterranean level, uh, in the Mediterranean area, in a multi-level and transnational way. So um, we will work very closely in this part with the IDP project. Uh, we have already signed a memorandum of understanding with with Julia and the whole partnership, and we will organize uh, annually a joint annual forum of the mission. Uh, to try to to promote this coordination and to get to to these other uh, stakeholders. Uh, under this work package, we we will try to find synergies with other uh, EU policies, and and we are also uh, initiating this activity of the regional climate action plans. We will produce a blueprint to help uh, the region the regions um, apply this uh, or develop these climate action plans are related to the uh, sector, tourism sector activities. So, well, uh, as you see, there are many activities. Uh, we need, of course, um, that the thematic projects actively participate in the activities of the thematic community. As, as you see, uh, you are, um, so to say, the main ingredient of our work and of our activities. Um, so, so we will uh, be very in touch with you. Uh, this is an example of one activity in which you will also participate. Uh, in this case, this this will take place um, after Easter break, and this is the the first meeting that we will do, um, welcoming the the ten projects uh, that we have now in the community that have started the, their activities uh, some some weeks ago. Uh, but of course, as the new calls for thematic projects are are resolved and new projects are incorporated in the community, we will also do this kind of activities with you. And now I give the floor to Julia. Uh, Julia, you can go ahead. Yes, thank you, Georgina. Thank you very much. It is a pleasure to be here in this info session organized by the US uh, for the next call of the program, which is uh, really useful. My name is uh, Julia Said. I represent the Legado Andalusia Andalusian Public Foundation from the Regional Ministry of Tourism of Andalusia, Spain. We are the leader partners of uh, Dialogue for Tourism. And uh, we are going to speak today about the overall objective of uh, Dialogue for Tourism project, which is uh, the IDP uh, of uh, the Sustainable Tourism uh, Mission. Our main objective is to capitalize the results of the thematic community projects in close collaboration with the community uh, tourism project under Mission 4. Um, through the involvement of the policy level, our aim is to increase the institutional capacity of public authorities, programs, strategies and initiatives in the Euromed area and beyond to transform tourism into greener and smarter and more uh, resilient. For this, of course, uh, we need uh, the collaboration of uh, the thematic community projects uh, through the involvement uh, of all of them um, with uh, the assistance of community for tourism project. Next slide, please, Georgina. Yes, uh, you can see there our core partnership, which is composed by 11 partners from uh, eight countries, uh, seven ERDF-MED countries and one EPA country. 
aiming to balance the different uh, partners' uh, disciplines and achieve an extensive uh, geographical distribution in the Euromed area, uh, which we think it is uh, a key point for uh, the development of our aim objective. So uh, the consortium structure uh, represents a multidisciplinary, disciplinary, multi-sectoral scheme, ensuring a multidimensional governance approach uh, to reach our uh, main goal, which is to transfer and capitalize the results of the thematic projects to the policy level. Next slide, please, Georgina. It is important to highlight as well, um, our uh, consortium have a structure of 25 associated partners. You can see uh, they are uh, the ge geographical distribution that cover almost all the countries of the program area and three South Met countries, Lebanon, Egypt, um, Morocco. Uh, we are uh, decided uh, to uh, involve them in all the developing of our activities uh, and they are representing a critical mass of interdisciplinary institutions who will act as advisors and users and supporters. On the slide, you can see uh, the distribution of uh, the task um, for uh, the capitalizing process. Next slide, please, Eugenia. Uh, from the 40th project, we face several transversal horizontal challenges in the Euromed R area, as uh, the lack of solid cooperation among Euromed public authorities and policymakers and across territories that hinders the efforts to address these challenges, as uh, stated on the transition pathways for tourism. Um, there is, uh, let's say, a gap in the cooperation of uh, the strategies at uh, European level in governance and sustainable tourism from national, regional, R and transnational, and the lack of uh, multi-sectoral dialogue of tourism related uh, stakeholders towards sustainability and resilience. In this scenario, we are working on effective uh, synergies to facilitate the exploitation, sharing and reuse of knowledge uh, from the project results uh, of the thematic community, uh, encouraging the transfer of practice and results uh, to other actors and territories and their integration in the development of local, regional, national and European policies and strategies, and last, increasing the coordination between actors of the policy level acting on the Mediterranean, one multi-level and another transnational. Next slide, please. So uh, for reaching our uh, aims, uh, we are focusing on a methodology based on to amplify the dialogue with national and supranational authorities, two, to transfer the results of uh, the thematic community projects, to improve coordination among policy actors within and beyond the Romet area, to implement mainstreaming strategies to favor the conditions for policy changes in sustainable tourism, and to improve the Mediterranean territorial cohesion. Next slide, please. So we have the goals in governance. Our scenario is the med area, but not only and beyond, because through uh, this, we are going to uh, promote an open discussion with a critical mass, uh, with uh, the help and assistance of our associated partners with Community for Tourism and with the GS to uh, work to cause a big impact on the policy level through all this process. Next slide, please. Therefore, this is a collective state of mind of the 40 project in the frame of the Sustainable Tourism Mission, uh, joining efforts uh, with the uh, Community for Tourism project to transfer with the coordination of the GS of Interreg Euromed and the involvement of all missions of uh, the, the program, its partners and associated partners in a transversal approach to maximize our impact through a battery of proposal by providing with concrete actions for an open dialogue at policy level. Next slide, please. This is uh, the general overview of our actions in each uh, work package. Uh, in this slide, I would like uh, to recall uh, the importance of the coordination with the ES, Community for Tourism projects, uh, the thematic projects, that is why uh, this info session is so important, the other missions of Interreg Euromed and the Union uh, for the Mediterranean. Now we are going to uh, briefly go through the contents of each work package. Next slide, please. 
here uh, you can take a um, ge uh, general look to the main content of uh, Word Package 1 result. In, in the frame of the, this Word Package, we have already done the mapping of stakeholders, uh, givers and receivers at policy level on programs and strategies. We have already celebrated the first cross-mission workshop for enlarging the initial uh, initial collaborative network uh, with relevant participation under the title Interreg Roma Admissions for a Mediterranean Green Deal Effective Synergies Starting with the Right Food. This work session was jointly organized and promoted uh, by the Four Institutional Dialogue Project uh, of the missions to start up an open discussion between, uh, between these projects and the representatives of key target groups at the European and Mediterranean level. And last, we organized last November uh, the online communication of event enhancing governance together for a smart and, and greener tourism in the Mediterranean Digital Awareness Day. Um, this session was aimed at uh, the familiarizing uh, the participants with the project uh, networking activities, enable them to, uh, to plan their engagement as associated partners in the upcoming years and to gain an understanding of the respective needs, interests, and to establish a real collaboration with the stakeholders at policy level uh, in the Euromed uh, region and beyond. Next slide, please. Uh, now on work package uh, to transfer, uh, the main objective that we have is to increase the capacity of recipients, institutions, and to integrate the results into their policies. So the main activities that we would like to mention uh, that we have foreseen in this work package are the creation and expansion of the 14 networks within and beyond the uh, remote area, uh, driving tourism transition uh, panel and hub, the sustainable tourism policy labs aim at consolidate and systematize Julia, sorry, we don't hear you. I think your microphone is off. Okay, I don't, I don't know why. So uh, I will uh, repeat about the Sustainable Tourism Policy Lab uh, that aim at consolidate and systematize transferring to effectively influence public policies for transforming tourism. The expansion of the network of sustainable tourism observatories in favor of tourism transformation. Uh, I would like to inform that we uh, plan to organize an important event in October in Ischia in Italy uh, for the expansion of the network this year. The part and the participation uh, in the Euromed Academy uh, with the creation of a massive open online course. Um, next slide, please. For uh, Work Package 3 coordination, our main objective uh, here is to join advocacy activities involving, uh, this is key, uh, the dialogue of European Union policymaking authorities and different programs. Some of the activities that we would like to mention here, uh, it's uh, the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding with the Community for Tourism project, in which we state uh, that uh, Community for Tourism and Dialogue for Tourism projects will support the collection and transferability of the results produced uh, by the thematic projects for reuse in each new calls, the thematic projects uh, that are, are going to be selected, that have been selected previously last November and that is going to be selected in this call. In this frame, Dialogue for Tourism will aim at transferring them to public authorities of all levels and policymaking institutions, projecting their potential impact towards uh, policy transformations. We would like to mention here as well uh, the Cross Network Alliance for Governance in Sustainable Tourism and its policy recommendation. Uh, we had uh, the first event of the Cross Network Alliance last, last October in Montenegro in our uh, steering committee meeting, uh, organized jointly uh, with our partner National Tourism Organization of Montenegro, where we had a, a relevant participation of representatives of policies, policies at the European level as uh, DJ Mare of the European Commission. And uh, we would like to mention as well here uh, the Euromed Sustainable Tourism uh, White Papers and the joint uh, declar political declarations as an outcome of the multi-level and multi-sectoral advocacy activities uh, that 
will be developed and circulated for endorsement among the policy level. This is going to be, let's say, in the uh, three last uh, years of implementation of the project. So uh, this is our these are our uh, main um, architecture of um, the project, and uh, we uh, remain at disposal for any uh, doubts or clarification or additional information about the project. I will give uh, the floor now again to Georgina. Georgina, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Well, we we have given a lot of information in 20 minutes about about both projects. So I guess that uh, the Joint Secretary will share this presentation uh, so you can have access to all of this information. So well, just to close, um, we were asked also to give you a short overview of the thematic projects that were already approved in the first call dedicated, dedicated to the two thematic projects. So here we have um, uh, been analyzing, uh, well, um, the categories of the of the projects that have been approved, the partners type of organizations that are participating in in these projects, and the, the number of partners per per country that we have uh, on the uh, with the project. Um, we have ten projects uh, at this moment in the in the sustainable tourism mission, ten thematic projects, but we expect to to keep incorporating more projects through this call and and coming calls that will that will be coming. Um, well, right now, uh, with these uh, 10 thematic projects, the investment uh, of the program in this in, in the tourism mission is uh, more than, well, it's almost 18.5 million of euros. And here you are the list of the projects that are uh, part of the sustainable tourism mission right now and a short description of, of the main topic that they are covering. Uh, the first for uh, thematic projects are allocated under the specific objective of innovation, which is not covered by this call, but we have uh, Livecchio um, dealing with the en enhancement of digital transformation to support the management of destination, Turismo, who will work in innovative technologies to monitor and manage tourism flows, Smitur is a project um, uh, well focused on smart industrial tourism uh, and working with a partnership um, um, among the Mediterranean uh, that have uh, smart uh, industrial tourism resources. Uh, then Ahmed Diet Go uh, will work with the Mediterranean Diet as a tourist attraction. These two following projects, Mast and Med Roots, are allocated under the specific objective uh, of the circular economy. Uh, so MAST uh, will work on the implementation of sustainable processes in the accommodation sector, and MedRoots uh, will work on a proposal of eco-itineraries across the European cultural routes. Um, the three following projects, Cool Noon, Nature for Climate Change, and Edit Adapt, are allocated under the specific objective of climate change, and they're dealing with the adaptation of the, tourism, the urban tourism offer to face the heating in the Mediterranean, um, nature-based solutions uh, for increasing the resilience of coastal destinations, and Edit Adapt is working on the reinforcement of the sustainability of the destination through the natural and cultural heritage assets. And finally, under the specific objective of nature and biodiversity, we have uh, just one project allocated, which is made Met Jayas, uh, that will uh, work on the preservation of the agricultural heritage through sustainable tourism. So this is, uh, well, all the topics of the projects that, that are uh, part of the sustainable tourism mission right now. And we wanted also to highlight uh, this part here, as I mentioned before, among the Community for Tourism Partnership, we have distributed different roles. And one of the main roles that we will um, be having is that um, uh, each of the partners of the partnership um, will be following up one or more projects. When we have more projects, we will follow up more projects, but we will be following up uh, very closely the activities of, of the project. So we have assigned one of the, the partners of C4T to, to each um, thematic project. The idea with this is that um, to be able to, to develop our activities, um, follow your activities, follow the implementation of, of your project, give you the support uh, that we aim to provide you uh, and where, where you need it, 
and identify uh, very um, more easily these synergies. And also for you that uh, that you can have a reference, a direct uh, a point of entry to the governance projects to the community. So so this is uh, mainly how we will work. Uh, so once uh, the the potential projects that are here in this session are approved and incorporated to the community, you will have also this angel because we call it like this as we will be following you during the whole implementation of your project so uh well i'm finishing here uh we will be very glad to welcome some of the project proposal in into our mission thank you very much thank you georgina and thank you Julia, for the governance project presentation um i will go back to all the questions that appeared in the chat starting with the first one of the list. Uh, do project proposal compulsory really have to complement on the projects founded by the previous one? Or also new streams are welcome? Yes, uh, new uh, ideas are welcome, of course. It's just that we don't want you to do something that has already been done. So that is why we encourage to work with uh, the already material produced. Uh, but if you have any good new idea, of course, you are welcome to uh, propose it. Um, our proposal supporting local regional public authorities in designing public policies and sustainable touristic models for the preservation mitigation of biodiversity eligible. Yes, of course it is. Uh, it is uh, eligible. So if you have a, a good idea, you can submit it, of course. Um, the following question, is the technological solution mandatory in relation to specific objective 2.7? If so, with a nap. OK, so technical solution is not mandatory, but a nap is possible. Uh, a nap for tourism itinerary is uh, considered an activity. Oh, OK, sorry. Would a nap for tourism itinerary is considered an activity or investment? Well, uh, it. I mean, it can be both. I mean, it will be an activity, of course, and it depending on to what uh, the the expenditures would be. It could be no investment. Yes, if it's in line with the activity, it has to. It can be investment, but I don't know what you expect to have a uh, 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 to 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 buy for an app. So. Anyway, this will be you can submit your application as you feel, and this won't be a, a, a bad point in the assessment. If there is a difference between active uh, investment or not, uh, we will <laughs> clean the application form once it's approved. So it's not a, a big issue. Uh, sorry, I hope I uh, uh, answered your question. OK, now. Um, yeah, Fatima Sarmiento, you are introducing your idea. Uh, so we, I'm referring again to the uh, forum that we have on our website. Uh, if we find a very good practice in a previous project uh, that can be applied in our territory, we share the na same need. It is regarded to be a project we can apply for. Yes, that's the idea, the idea of the transfer projects. The transfer project uh, should use what is already existing, uh, should, if possible, have the the givers in their partnerships and uh, no, yeah, the givers and have the takers. So you transfer the good results and the good ideas that are already existing. And these are the project's results. Yes, or do we need some kind of legal procedure for that? No, you can. This is um, the results that are produced in the Interreg Med program. Uh, they are open source or open to anybody. So that's that's why it is uh, published on the website. You can use it. That it's done. It's made for it. Um, okay, our partners participating in the consortium and the governance projects eligible. For uh, thematic projects, yes, it's possible. OK, the audio is back, so it's not a question. Are uh, infrastructure works allowed to be implemented in the framework of the project? Infrastructure, uh, yes, it is. Uh, like re reconstruction of central city area. Yeah, it's possible uh, in, the, in the test projects. I mean, transfer, you won't transfer any infrastructure works. But yes, in the test projects, it's possible. And I think that's it. If you have any other question, you can raise your hand. 
are you going to send a publish the presentation? Yes, <laughs> we, we will uh, uh, publish them on the website, not send them, uh, but we will put them on the our website, uh, both presentations, our and uh, I think Georgina and Julia are OK with the publishment of the presentation, so <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think. No more questions. OK, so. OK, can more than one organization from the same country participate? Of course, you just have to make sure that you have the five uh, minimum five countries uh, represented and also consider that it is a transnational program. So we expect to have as much as possible the whole uh, Euromed area represented. I mean, if you have all partners coming from it's just an example. Spain and Portugal. This won't show really uh, the transnationality of the of the project. So, please make sure that you have uh, uh, an area of implementation as wide as possible, covering different sectors. Uh, well, yes, it can, but it has to be justified. I mean, if it's. Uh, uh, technical partners that implement and then you have a public authority that uh, uptake the what has resulted from the uh, from the the implemented uh, activities it can be but it ha it has to be justified and okay Waiting a few minutes if you have any more questions. I just want to remind you that it's really important to for you to read the document, the terms of reference, of course. Um, we have another really important document that is the courtesy application form where we give tips for you to answer as clearly as possible to all the, the information we are requesting for us to be able to assess your application. So please read this document. It is really important. OK, if I may ask, I must have missed it. Are in first. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, infrastructure works and equipment purchase are allowed uh, for the testing projects. It is possible. You, you can also find this information in the program manual. You're welcome. And um, OK, so I was saying, please read our documents, the program manual. I know it's a big document, but you have the the, the table of uh, contents, so you can go directly to the section that is interesting. And um, yes, yeah, the program and technical thing. OK, OK. Um, and uh, I was saying the application form, uh, the, the courtesy uh, template of the application form. And, and I think that's it. If you don't have any more questions. We are still here. You can still send your question on our website. OK, another one. When you talk about sectoral agencies, you mean organization advocating specific economic sectors, like, for instance, Union of Entrepreneurs or SMEs in tourism. It can be both. I mean, usually it's um, sectoral agencies. It can be environment uh, agencies of, of a region, but it, it, we welcome also SMEs, touristic SMEs, of course. Mm. All right. I remind the following uh, technical seminars that will uh, tackle all the part of the application forms. You're welcome. And um, and that's it. I hope. Oh uh, yeah. I wish you, as Georgina and Julia said, I wish you good luck as well to, for the the application form. And we hope to see you soon uh, being part of our sustainable tourism community. So thank you all and goodbye. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.